Straw Hut Media. We're better together with Fan and Heather. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our next episode of Better Together with Anne and Heather. We have Peter Thomas Roth on. And if you listen, you will find out why Peter is actually responsible for Heather and Anne's friendship. This is true, guys. And we also get great advice from Peter, somebody who started a huge successful brand and business. And he gives our listeners advice on how you can do that, too. And he can also tell you why he has a mausoleum next to Barbara Streisand. So stay tuned. Cheers. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Better Together with Anne and Heather. Today, we are so excited to have Mr. Peter Thomas Roth on the show with us. He is not only a friend, but a, a really a, a guide to me, a spiritual master, honestly, in my life. You have helped me so much. And what the audience doesn't know listening is that Peter Thomas Roth is responsible for Heather and Anne meeting. I don't even know if Peter knows this, and we are going to get to that story later, but why don't you bring us in to uh, our guest today, Heather? Okay. Today, we have Peter Thomas Roth, the founder and CEO of his own major skincare brand, aptly named Peter Thomas Roth. <laughs> skincare is a large part of his heritage as he comes from a long line of well-being enthusiasts. During the 1800s and early 1900s, his family owned and operated two spa resorts in Hungary where people would come from all over the world to soak in their hot springs. Founded in 1993, his line now has more than 100 products sold worldwide. He is known for choosing the most effective ingredients and using the highest level possible for each product. So it's no surprise that many products nowadays use the smallest amount of an ingredient so they can list it on the label. Peter Thomas Roth believes that if an ingredient is going to be on the label, it should be at an amount that makes a meaningful difference, and that is why his products work. Well, not only work, he is the only person who has made me use a product, which happened when we were in New York last week. How are you, Peter? You look wonderful. Good, thank you. You guys look great, too. Thank you. Good to well, see you. Everybody, but, but, it, it, pause. You know, Wait a minute. Just pause. Oh, yes, hammering. You guys Oh, okay. That's good to know. Okay. Did you hear that, Peter? We can talk over the pounding. It's just if you go to speak with the pounding, just go, you know, wait a minute till it stops. I got it. Got it. It okay. might, unfortunately, I bet you the guy stopped it. For, he's right outside. Just so you know, it's the entire Park Avenue building that's doing it, right? Right. So it's like, uh, like 200 feet on, on 73rd and 200 feet on Park, and they're in front of my building. Well, so listen, well, they, our listeners, there we have you know what, we, we have some construction and, and go with it. it. At least it's not right in your house, although you are under construction in your house from what I know. But everyone right. listening, you have got to know that Peter is in front of the most gorgeous fireplace and has Christmas up today. So when you see YouTube on Monday, you have got to take a look. How are you, Peter? Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? So um, right after this, uh, that your uh, podcast, I have QVC an hour, and today's today on QVC is the official first day of Christmas. So I had to put the Christmas decorations. Up. I love it. <laughs> well, it's so beautiful. QVC. I mean, we talked about your products selling out. I know QVC is one of the places that um, you sell your products and have done very well in the last couple of weeks with one of the products that now I'm addicted to, which right. is selling out all over the place. Is it not? Yes, we got so lucky. Um, this um, this lovely lady, Trini, Trinidad, nineteen sixty seven on TikTok. She posted a, uh, a, a demonstration of an eye product we have. It's in from XI, and it went viral, and it's almost thirty million views and like over five billion likes, and sold out everywhere. It's crazy. <laughs> if it's thirty million views, does that mean it's thirty million sales? <laughs> No, it would be nice. <laughs> but something close. But I love the fact that you, because you I am the product you person. Did. Yes, I am, you are. I am obsessed with, with all kinds of products. And in fact, we were going to have the eye patches on for you today, but we, we decided against Well, it. in fact, I was, I, I, you know, like to track things where, where Anne has talked about um, on podcasts. And I found one, uh, a podcast, and I, and I was listening to it because it said, you know, uh, Anne H and Peter Thomas Roth, it, you know, they spoke of you. And as I'm listening to the podcast, 
they're saying, what do you think Anne's like besties thought when she said like, she's just befriended Peter Thomas Roth? I'm sure they're like, product, take me to the factory. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is as I'm listening to that podcast, I literally have your gold under eye things on my eyes. <laughs> I think you had them on every As single I'm day listening. when we were in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, we had such a great time with you in New York. And before, I know that we had some press that followed us, but we had one of the greatest times with you. And and we're curious what your take on uh, New York was as we were there for Fashion Week. Um, we spent a, a few magical nights with you, but there was one in particular where we went to uh, Derek Fabulous's um, uh, what was it? A show on top of Gen Art, <laughs> Gen Art on top of uh, the rooftop, and then we went on and on and on to have such a great evening. Can you tell us about our time in New York? Oh, it was so much fun. Well, that's Fashion Week, and Fashion Week in New York is crazy, like crazy. And New York became so alive. All the restaurants were full up, and so were just all the venues. And, and I mean, we went restaurant hopping, and it's so funny because we and my friends went out. Like the next day, and it was empty. Oh, <laughs> really? Well, left. it was also the when U.S. Left, Open. Everyone left. It was also the U.S. <laughs> Open. Like when we saw Larry David at Mr. Chow, I saw him the next day at the U.S. Open. You know, I mean, not that I was at the U.S. Open that day. But oh, I saw you know him on that TV. he was in. He was in. Well, yeah, because I US saw him on TV him. the next day when I was watching the U.S. Open. So well, like, Mr. Chow that night was like was star-studded event. Peter, you took us to the hottest restaurant in town. By accident, yep. <laughs> it was fantastic. He said, find a restaurant near Derek's show. And I go, okay, we'll get, get one. I know well, you're I mean, a very talented restaurant hunter, I will say. Uh, I want to, uh, I, I mean, I cannot avoid, I, it's not even an elephant in the room, but I, I'm i curious if you would mind uh, if, if we share how we met Peter, because I think people want to know. Do you, Heather? Do you think people want to know? I think people how might know, but if you want to <laughs> say it straight out. I mean, I don't know. Is it embarrassing to you? It's not embarrassing to me. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Well, no. Oh, is it embarrassing? No, it's not embarrassing. It's just that it's up to you. Well, I think it's fun to tell because I, you know, people are kind of following this ridiculous Raya story. And I think it's kind of fabulous that we met on Raya. But will you tell people how, uh, <laughs> how we actually ended up t chatting? Uh, yeah, your face popped up on my Raya account. <laughs> So do you get like free pop-ups every day, like the new meat in town or something? I think they, they yeah, they like limit, they throw a few at you. Like, but they throw a few, like I was, I was, I, I was fresh meat because I just joined Raya that morning at three o'clock. And I think by seven o'clock in the morning, you had texted me because it was 10 o'clock in New York and you were so adorable. And you said, well, I mean, you, you look kind of cute. And I was like, you, you look kind of cute too. And off we went to the races, and that's such a cool. I don't know. I think that's kind of a romantic. It's a very story. modern day. It meet, is right up. <laughs> modern day. Meeting. It's very twenty twenty one, right? I think so. I, you don't regret it, do you? No, I think it's so much fun. <laughs> I, I, it cracks me up. <laughs> I think it, it cracks me up too. You have introduced me to some uh, such wonderful people. We had so much fun with you in New York, and 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 we just I don't know. We're we're delighted to be your friend, but we do want to dig in a little bit into. Well, wait, we teased your life. we teased something before that. How how Peter Thomas Roth is responsible for us sitting here. And even knowing each other. Well, absolutely. I mean, I can't wait to hear that story. Peter, did you know it that does. was true? I did not. Tell me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Well, in the early 90s, at about the same time that your product line launched, I was in my early 20s and I had for the first time in my life acne. And it was traumatizing, horrifying. And the, I, I don't know how I found it. But I found Peter Thomas Roth's glycolic acid face wash, something like that. Probably. And there was one place that I could get it, Larchmont Beauty, in this little neighborhood in Los Angeles. And when I went there in my 20s to go to this particular beauty store, I fell in love with the neighborhood. And I thought, if ever I'm a grown up, <laughs> if you ever make it that can to buy adult a house, or and I keep and I kept going back there to because that's where you bought product back then. It wasn't as easy as it is now to just mm -hmm. order things online. You had to go to the store that sold it, and that was the store that sold it. And so that's how I ended up living where I live, 
and that's how I ended up meeting you at the tennis club of that neighborhood, if not for my horrible skin and Peter's fabulous product, I don't think I would have known Larchmont and I don't think we would have ever met and I don't think we would be sitting here today. Isn't that fascinating? So thank you. Thank you for See? giving me my best friend. Is Whenever you have lemons, you make lemonade. <laughs> well, it is funny how well, you can track certain things that happen in your life. You know, yeah. it's I always find it to be fascinating to to just the circuitous routes that we take and the in the things that you think are innocuous that happen and actually have a profound effect on your life's path. It's in, it's interesting to trace those totally. things back and everybody can do it from the college you picked to the somebody you dated that it didn't work out to, you know, having a zit. Having, <laughs> <laughs> to having a zit and then a podcast. I, you know, Peter, when I'm out with you, I it, there is not one night or day that goes by if we're out in public at all where someone doesn't come up and and not only recognize you, but fall basically on their knees saying, you saved my skin. Do you, I mean, do you know that that happens to you all the time or does it just kind of roll off your back? Uh, well, the acne part is horrible because I had it. And unless you have acne, you can't relate to the story. But, you know, you walk out and in the end of the day, if you have a white pimple on the tip of your nose or your chin and no one sees it or your face is so greasy from being oily. So when I made that line, I wanted to, like, address these issues as best as I can because I couldn't find really strong products in the market and, and just put the strongest in there that you got. Oh, is, that why <laughs> you went into the, is that why you went into the beauty product business? Yeah, I, I still had zits. It's terrible. I still get zits. It's well, terrible. that's I know. Isn't that funny? It's like you're, you're in your fifties, and it's like a zit. I'm like, really? That's I don't know. I've, 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 I've never had. I know. Zit, so but, I don't know. But, but <laughs> no. that's, why you got, that's why you can't relate. Eighty percent of Americans have acne. Well, I know. It's that's a, why I'm big, saying. I mean, it's a big deal, and there's a big relation of that to depression. And not yeah. to be grim, but even suicide. It's, it's the, that is acne grim. is a, re well, I'm just saying, you know. Uh, no, no, that, but that's what I wonder, Peter, is that why you started your business? Yes, I couldn't find good acne products. Wow. When, when I was in college, there was this dermatologist on Fifth Avenue that my mother took me to, and he had a little brown bottle, you shake, 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 and you put it on your pimples every night. So I look like, you know, a spotted, I don't know, something I look <laughs> yes. terrible so I was the last one to go to sleep because I didn't want anyone to see him the first one to wake up in the morning wow. it looked terrible and that kind of work it didn't do a great job and it then it got the brown stuff all over my pillowcase is horrible uh there was nothing there was nothing I tried antibiotics I don't go on antibiotics it's a big mistake so there are certain drugs now that are very helpful um but you need a dermatologist for it but you have to have severe acne for that if right. you have general normal acne you know, you got to work on it and you just want something strong that actually helps, you know, c control it. Well, I mean, thank you because I've seen so many people thank you. So I know that their self-esteem is boosted by you and your products. And we're going to take a little break. But when we come back, I want to talk about um, how you became a skincare guru and, um, and who inspired you to do so. So I've been trying to cut down on carbs, sugar, and junk food and realized I basically can't eat anything anymore. And sometimes I'm just really craving something sweet. Magic Spoon is the perfect fix that feels like it's cheating, but it isn't. It has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Plus there are only 140 calories a serving. It's Keto-friendly, gluten-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. It really has it all. And if you and your partner have different opinions on cereal flavors, don't worry. Magic Spoon's Variety Pack comes with four flavors. Cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. All of the flavors from your childhood, but it's super nutritious. I just had the cocoa flavor this morning, and it is the perfect way to start my day. But you can always have a bowl in the afternoon, too, when you need a little pick-me-up. To get your hands on a variety pack of Magic Spoon, just go to magicspoon.com slash better. If you use the special promo code better while checking out, you can save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. I have a feeling you won't need a refund, though. Trust me, my pantry is fully stocked with Magic Spoon at all times. It's so good. 
It's not stock now because I stole it. <laughs> Had her stole it. <laughs> Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash better and use the code better to save $5 off. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit. I think that some of our listeners would probably be fascinated to know what does it take to build a brand, to start a brand? What can you tell us how you got into it and why you, what you think is important to a brand succeeding and kind of your day to day? Like all of those things I think people listening are really interested to know somebody that has been so successful in starting something, you know, advice that you have. We always say that, like, you know, we want people to learn at yes. least one thing by listening to our podcast. So we'd love for you to share some advice with our listeners and us. <laughs> when I started with the acne thing, I used to, my mom took me to the derms, all of them. And then um, um, they injected all the pimples with, you know, whatever, which was great. But they didn't really work on the blackheads because germs don't have time to squeeze out anything. That's you'd go to an esthetician for that. And then the department stores had nothing. And then when you when I went to the department stores, it just said like, you know, cleansing cream. And then I buy it, throw the box out, get the instructions in the garbage too. And you come home and no one I would never remember. So when I created my own line. Sorry for the construction noise. When I created my own line, I, A, put everything on the front and back of the bottle. So the directions were pretty um, long and, you know, and really explained what to do. And on the front, I wanted you to know what it is. So if it's 2% salicylic acid for acne, I want you to know it's 2%, not 1% or half percent. Because if you bought something at 1% and it wasn't working, you know, and you bought something at 2% and was working, you as a consumer should know that hmm. for a fact. Hmm. I remember so that glycolic face else. wash was 2%. I mm -hmm. do remember that. It so, was on the front. Yeah, that was with <coughs> the products being discontinued, but yeah. Oh. Long time ago. Uh -oh. Anyway. Well, I'm all good now. So <laughs> and everybody then else is on the road. What was interesting, <laughs> Women's Wear Daily wrote this thing that I was like a pioneer that no one wrote that. Because most people, less is more on a bottle. You know, hmm. like transformation cream making that name up right, that's it right. that's all you gotta know no one needs to know what's in it just trust me i'm a big beauty company and that's what but i don't and it transforms you I, I have a question about that when you said transformation cream i i am obsessed with beauty beauty products as i've already said and i read them like a novel like i love to read what they say they're going to do to me you know i do have a medicine cabinet full of broken dreams but there, except I, for Peter's, I enjoy. I enjoy reading that. So, who writes that? Do you have who writes that? And how, I wrote all my copy. Did you? Really? And I'm not a good writer. Yeah, I write everything. Um, and now, now we have a team of like twelve to fourteen people marketing. So they get it going, and I rewrite it. But at the beginning, I wrote everything and designed everything, and it was horrible because they didn't have no computers or. There was no spell check. It was, right. Oh, you've got a telephone. You, you're, you're not that old. Peter, you got to shoot me a draft of one. I promise I want to write one. I'll be, I'll, no, we I'll, wrote I'll, it. I'll we be were, so we good at it. When we started, it was mechanicals. It wasn't computer generated. Now it's so much easier. You know, someone sends it, they send it to me and I just take a screenshot and I hand write, I write on, you know, write on it and then right. I send it right back. And while we're talking, we switch it. The labels go much faster now. Must have. So, oh, I'm sure. So when you started, did you have a clear vision for what, you know, your mission, your vision? Hmm. How uh, tell us about how you built such a solid brand. That's so a hard thing to do to, to have such four, brand like, recognition. It's four words like breakthrough formulas, astonishing results. So the formulas have to be breakthrough and they work and the results have to work. And that's it. It doesn't even matter. Even if it's just a basic cleanser, it needs to you know, basic cleanser has to take off makeup. Right, right, so, right. Well, not everyone does. <laughs> yeah, but so, no, it's true. Did, That's why I don't even do, I don't use product because none of them do what they say they're, they're going to do and it feels all weird and everything else. And then when then I tried your eye cream and then I fell in love. Uh -oh. <laughs> so it, it, it works, it works. But Just it the, works. the idea is but that's I want it to work. Thing. But you know what, there's, 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 there's a lesson there in what you just said because when I, when I wanted to research you a little bit, I mean, I got to spend a week with you and got to know you pretty well, but I wanted to really, you know, dig in and learn more about your business. And you have such solid messaging about what your brand is. And I think that's the lesson for people 
uh, that want to build a brand. Like in PR, we call it, you know, uh, communication objectives. Like your communication mm. objectives are just what you said, right? Break, say that again. It's it's breakthrough formulas, astonishing results, and I just, you know, I just want anyone reading the label should be able to understand it. And it's you know, consistent, it, it, the, the consistency of when that came up. It, the first time you see it, you don't really register totally. But then when, when, when that repetitive messaging is so consistent, and this is true for any, any brand, even our podcast, we could apply it to, mm -hmm. you know, anybody trying to build something. I just think that, that you are such an example of how having clear messaging uh, can really help make your brand stand out in a crowded place, right? I mean... <laughs> Totally. It has to be clear. Everyone has to understand it from a teenager to like a grandma. You just read it, understand it. Don't have someone explain it to me, you know? And when you do that, um, and you can, and then the product is actually good on top of it, and the message is clear and understandable, it's a, it, could, it could be a win win. Yeah. Did your business exceed, uh, exceed your expectations? Yeah. This was a, this wasn't a, a business. It was a, um, a uh, hobby. <laughs> wow. I just did it as a hobby for fun and, and it just took off. Literally the first, the first time we sold it in Las Vegas at a, um, a esthetician trade show and we got huge orders immediately. And then within two years or three years, we were at spas and skincare salons. And then, and then it just took off. It was really good. Well, that's what having a great product does. But so it was a hobby, and I know that you were very close to your mom. I know you were close to your dad. Did they? What What was their reaction when when this business took off? They were in the jewelry business, correct? Yeah, I grew up in the jewelry business, uh -huh. and my father grew up in Hungary. And um, they, his father had two hotels, and in the hotels in Hungary, uh, they were little tiny hotels. But everyone in Hungary, you put a you have a pool like a swimming pool. And you just turn the faucet on uh, and the healing waters from underneath in Hungary come up. It's kind of brown and gross, but people go there to heal themselves. What? Uh, wow. Everyone does. And all over Hungary, not just over there. It's just, you know, there's there's not much clean water. It's all, you know, that 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 um, healthy water that people like travel for hundreds of miles, thousands of miles to soak their body in. Uh, I think we have it in Colorado. Some places, the Colorado Springs have it too. I've been huh. there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that so the spa environment was that's kind of inspired it from the beginning. I was always interested, but I was in the jewelry business, and um, really, I was just I like product. I, I always wanted to make a product, and I thought it was fun because I always like to be in control of making a product and um, getting the ingredients. Were kind of actually, it's kind of easy because it sounds really hard, but think of it this way: if you go to a fancy restaurant, right, you tell them, okay, I want. A steak i want a medium rare but i want you to burn it on the outside then i want like potatoes with like very little butter or or blah 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 you tell the chef exactly how you want to cook it yeah so that's me i was telling the chemists exactly how they should bake it cook it well how do you find a chemist it. like what do you do like pick up the you know yellow pages what you do at the beginning we had um at the beginning we had a lab in california that uh that private labels and that we were doing with that. But what happens is I would have like a hundred revisions until it was perfect. And when you work with the lab, they only like to do like one or two and that's it. This is it. Take it or leave it. So about, Oh, 20, 15, 20 years ago, I can't even remember now we opened our own lab in New Jersey. So I have my own chemist and, oh, wow. and yeah. And the chemists come from really big companies. Um, so they, they're the experts. It's like, their job is to make sure something doesn't separate. For instance, you put it together with all the ingredients right. I want and, and, and my product development person they get in, we find things and put it together and the chemists add things. But when you shake it together, you don't want it to be like oil and water. Right, right, right. And then the other trick, which most people actually don't know, it has to pass, uh, I think it's called freeze thaw. So freeze thaw means, think about this, if your product is sitting on your windshield in your car and it's yep. zero degrees out, it's going to freeze and then it's going to thaw right 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 um so it can't separate or if you're let's say in in florida or in texas or in vegas in the summer it's 110 degrees on your dashboard it's going to almost boil right so you don't want to separate either it's a trick um it's not a trick it's it's that's 
it's hard to do. Well, yeah, you I mean, you make, don't use glue. Stable. Like, what? I mean, how do you? What? What? What's the product that keeps it? Uh, what is there? One that is is the thing that that uh, merges them. When you look at the ingredients, you know how they always have all these extra stuff. Yeah. A lot of that has to do with merging and keeping it to not separate. I like can't believe I didn't go to the lab. Through. I want to go to the lab. Oh, you would love the lab. Oh, man, yes, I yes, love yes, the we lab. Can, well, we'll put you in a vat of something fun. Oh, yeah, please do. Oh, oh, fantastic. Now I really can't wait. Uh, <laughs> like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we should have, we could do a whole. Oh, my God. We could do a whole those, TikTok on that. You know the like, horror movie? Buy it That's for me, like, Daddy. Buy it for me. He's got the horror movie thing going. Oh, my goodness. That play that. It is, it, it is. Great. I'm hearing strange things in my ears. Um, uh, I have a question. Yes, yes. Um, what is the most difficult thing about running a business like you have, and what is the most enjoyable or rewarding thing about it? The most enjoyable thing right now is when you get to a certain size, which is a nice big size, which we are at, it's just so much less pressure because we're getting sales from all over the place. And, and we have the, um, I call it critical mass where things are still selling people. A lot of people have it and they're buying it. When we were like a quarter of the size, it was always scarier mm. because you never knew if someone's going to actually buy a new product of yours or continue to buy an old product that they already bought. That those are, those are, but right now it's so much, it's so much easier. Um, but it's a little harder because, for example, when you say that what's on the packaging, do you write it? Well, after I write the packaging and then we write the box, then it has to go on our website. Then it has to go on, you know, Sephora's website, then QVC, then Ulta, then Macy's, Norseman's. And there's a lot of writing and everyone has a different format on their website. So we have to adjust wow. it. So that's what I have the writers doing. I don't have to do that anymore. That's a lot of like a lot of work. Well, yeah, a good you're problem. the boss. You can yeah. give that to somebody else. You want to, want to, want to, wait, he didn't say what's what? the worst. Oh, well, I thought that was the worst. I haven't even read the copy for all of the different things. Oh, no, the best is that he's a success and he he's making money all over oh, the place because he's all the, over in every country and in every store and he's doing really well. That's the best part. There's sometimes the worst is when you get a really big order and you don't have the money to buy the tubes. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how often have you run up against that in the last 10 years? A lot. Oh, really? Because you just sold out a lot of products. Are we going to give away anything if we ask you what you're going to be selling uh, for Christmas on QVC? Sure. Whatever you want. Well, you tell me. You what? want a gift certificate on the website? So no, no, I, I just, I, no, I want to know what products you're selling. Oh, my God. We have so many. Um, oh, so do, so when you go on QVC, how does it work? Do you sell, so you sell them all, out, all or do you pick like five or what? Good question. So right after this, I have a one-hour show on QVC. Uh-huh. Uh, we have mm, eight. You usually have uh, eight to 12 minutes per product. So in an hour, it's about I don't know, six, seven, eight products. And we go over with the buyers and they pick out which ones they want to sell live. That's how uh, QVC works. And do uh, you get Sephora, a deal on QVC? Is it, say again? is it a deal that you get if you buy it through QVC or is it? Sometimes okay. on QVC, we usually uh, supersize and mega size it. So if uh, something is available in one ounce, we sell it sometimes three ounces or six ounces. Uh oh, so Heather's going. Heather's going to watch gonna, you on QVC. I'm find, but how do you it's find? Right I'm, I'm asking a dumb question. I don't even know how to. How, can you, how do you find QVC? Where do you go to like watch you on QVC? It's a well. There are two ways to do it. It's really simple. You go on your TV and you find it. Go on guide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or you go to QVC.com on your smartphone computer okay. and you can okay. press watch well, live anytime. Well, I don't I have a thousand channels. How do I know which one QVC is? I guess I search for QVC. Um, you can buy it's low. It's low. Okay. Well, one of the things that you were kind of excited about last week, I think, was that you, I mean, there are different time slots that you can go on QVC and everything else, but there was a bit of a celebration because uh, because of the hot product that you have, the the eye cream, you were on primetime QVC, is that right? And you sold out in like 10 minutes. No, I never, it sold out without me going on. Oh, <laughs> man, I thought I was- It so just our, sold out, I no, at nine in, in the morning, it was, it was like sold out at our website. And by noon, all our retailers, it was gone on every website out oh, there. So it, it, it gets rid of fine. under eye circles, creases, all of that. And, and the woman on TikTok, you just watched it happen. And what's the name of the product again? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. I can't, Fox. I can't read it. Can you say what it is? It's, Instant Firm XI Temporary Eye Tightener. Okay. And are you sold out now? One. He has, he has yes. one left. <laughs> I'm not selling it today at QVC. We don't have any left. And, That's so um, funny. Now, now you're running out of money two, for, for, the, for, the, for no, the tubes. In, 
we just got a whole bunch of tubes in. So I think in two weeks, we're going to, it'll be fresh at retail again. Do you use your own products? I do actually. What, which ones do you use? My favorite, which I don't have in front of me. First, I use the anti-aging cleansing gel to wash my face all the time. Because okay. it's salicylic acid and it has um, glycolic acid. So that you use all the time. Then I use Skin to Die For, which is in a little purple tube. And I put it all over my face because what it does is it kills the shine. And it and you can't see it. It doesn't look like makeup, so you can't see it on you. You're really close. You can't see it. Uh, but it kind of filters the skin from... Um, fine lines from rough skin texture and just makes your skin look good. Like everyone says, I have terrible skin. Anyone who has acne skin probably will feel the same way. Uh, but everyone says, gee, your skin looks so nice. And then I'm like, thank you. But it's only because I have that the skin to die. And that's a product that- I'm a witness. You do not have terrible skin, my friend. Why don't we take a break and we'll come back with Peter Thomas Roth. You all know Heather is crazy about skincare. Some of her home remedies have been a bit strange. For example, want to share? Strange? You think it's strange to put 10 different products on your face before you go to bed? That it takes me an hour and a half to put on all of my stuff before I go to bed? That I rub needles on my face? Exactly, I, none okay. of that works. But you do know what actually works? Prescription treatments. That's why we're excited to partner with Apostrophe. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. Apostrophe connects you with a board-certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin. Apostrophe treats acne, and they can also help you hit your other skincare goals, like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. Heather will love this. Heather, what are some of your skincare goals? All the things you just said. That's why we have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with a board-certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash better when you use our code better. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash better and click begin visit, then use our code better at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's apostrophe.com slash better and use that code better to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we thank apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Okay. I want to know this men and women have different feelings about products, obviously, but you are a man that sells to uh, men. And is that, was that difficult to, to bridge that gap? Or do you have a, do you talk specifically to men on QVC or anything? Because your products are fantastic for men too. Well, I don't think it's like you sell to them. It's the way you address the product. Okay. Just have to be, it's more politically correct. That being said, a lot of men do care about their skin. Just so not much enough. So. Yeah. So a lot of men just buy their stuff in the drugstore or have their significant other buy it for them. Uh, most guys who have no issues, they, they, they say, well, what should I do? I, I wash my face, you know, with shampoo in the shower in the morning. And I said, well, the reason why you do that is because A, you have perfect skin. You don't really need anything, you know, and for guys, a lot of things don't bother them, like a little fine lines or uneven skin texture. They just don't care. By the way, I didn't even know that washing your face w with shampoo was a thing. What do you yeah, mean that's how I do? That's how I found out because oh. you, I asked, where is your face wash? And you're like, just use shampoo. Well, and I was not? like, <gasps> oh, what horror, horror, horror for Heather that I would do that. But, but now she because, has products. No, but listen, if you have dry skin, if you wash your face in the shower in the morning, uh, you'll still look good at night. You don't have to wash your face. Hmm. till you go to sleep. Even if you don't go to sleep, you don't, I, even when you go to sleep, you may not have to wash your face. If you have oily skin, you're washing your face two, three times a well, day. Well, I double cleanse. Sure. I do an oil, an oil cleanser followed by a gel cleanser. Yeah, and because you're that to me skin. would be a waste of time, but that's, <laughs> that's why I don't have it. I mean, honestly, that's, a, that's what it is. I don't want to spend, no, the, dry skin. I don't want to spend the money or the time to do well, all Heather, of the nonsense Heather, that everybody Heather, when you were in, um, if you ever go to Colorado skiing or something, right? 
aren't you a little surprised sometimes at the end of the day, like your face isn't oily because it's so dry out? And like, I don't necessarily have to wash my face. It's like, what's wrong here? Yeah. It's the that, same concept, right? If you had dry skin, you'd be like, Anne, you know, I, don't, I don't have to wash my face. I just have to get the makeup off of it. Yeah, I don't even do don't that sometimes. To, but I don't have to wash my arms or something because they're not greasy, you know, because there's no oil on here. Right. It's the same concept at night. It's not like you maybe want to take a shower to get clean, but you're not getting the oil off. Well, it's, speaking it's, of washing know. your face with shampoo, I did learn something a couple of years ago that was sort of life changing whenever I was without shaving cream, like to shave your legs. You can use. Yeah, I don't. I use shampoo conditioner you're supposed to use but i don't use, i don't shave my legs but i know you don't have any hair but you use conditioner i mean i have you, hair on my head if you're if you're in a situation where you cannot where you do not have shaving cream you can yes. use conditioner and it's it and works is that is this new news to you or it was new news a couple of years ago wow. and once i found that out i was mm -hmm. i was you've been years and years and years of shaving your legs and you never thought conditioner would work no as i a, always use shaving a cream <laughs> it's funny what we learn about our friends Listen, Peter. Well, I bet you, you there's people out here who don't know that. People, I, our listeners, tell us the ones who just learned that valuable information. Right, right in. This just in. Who uses conditioner on their legs? Now, Peter, I want to ask because we are better together. Um, is there somebody that you um, have seen as a mentor or uh, the better for you that has guided you along your path? No. No. <laughs> Perfect. No. Okay, good. I hope your mom isn't listening. No. Uh, no, that's that you can't kind of of parent. That's not. No. No, no, no. I'm te I'm obviously teasing. I know you're. Well, we've, no, had, saying, we've, we've actually had that answer a lot. That. You'd be surprised. And you how do? Many, yes. Are people uh, are, are like, you, feel you, better? you think about it and you're just like, yeah, no, I, I do it all myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're saying like, okay, something got screwed up today and like, oh, don't worry, it'll be better. Like, no, like somebody, no, like, somebody in your life that you feel like if you weren't friends with them or if you didn't know them or like when you're with them, you feel like you're kind of a better version of yourself or they push you forward hmm. or they... Or they hold you back when you need to be held back, like that person that is kind of your, your, you know, compass or your, or, or somebody that you just you, you feel like you you have your most fun with. Or he's like, know? nope, none of those things. Can, can I Google one and order it on Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> Do they appear? <laughs> I think you can. I think you can. Well, I think oh, that'd be a great Amazon gift. Wouldn't it be? <laughs> Wouldn't it be the better? Well, maybe we should start. We should do a better. It. We should do a blow up better doll. We should. Why not? A we could do mail and female. Doll. A blow up better doll. <laughs> if, if you don't, if you don't have anybody, we'll name it Peter. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> wow, that has a couple of different meetings, but yeah, I mean, you know, for sure, the blow up Peter doll. Well, what do you think about Peter that doll. as a product? Mm -hmm. Can we sell it on QVC? I don't <laughs> think that QVC will allow it. <laughs> It's a very PG. Oh. It's a PG place. Okay, well, we won't it's have to be very PG. All. Okay, well, there has to be somebody that you, uh, like, let's say if you were going to have a dinner or, uh, like, who who is the person in history or in the world? I, I actually read that you have your mausoleum next to Barbara Streisand. Oh, you did read that. Yes, yes so which that I was... think fascinating. So, so if you have to be next to somebody when you're not dead or have dinner, you know, uh, who, who would it be? Who would be that person in history that would would you'd be so interested or a celebrity or who would you like to sit down with? Or if you could ask somebody a question uh, from history. Have like, you ever who, wanted to go out to dinner with anybody? Oh, so you're saying no, I would say who like someone super interesting and bright. Who could yeah, like, like, a, like a celebrity or somebody like in history Einstein? or yeah. Can they be sure. dead? Yes, of course they can be dead. Is oh, it Einstein, would like Einstein be your, would Einstein be the guy? Well, it's just like if, yeah, like give me a couple of tips on like you didn't really concentrate on formulas and everything you're doing. <laughs> Maybe you could concentrate on something for wrinkles. Simple. <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> Let me hear what you think about that. Who would be yours? Now, wait a minute. Would be I yours? need to ask why and what made you determine to have, first of all, a mausoleum, second of all, next to Barbara Streisand. Can you tell us that story? I bet I can guess. Well, I didn't ask you. Okay, I guess he, I think he wanted the best real estate, I, and it was probably right. <laughs> happened to be next to Barbara Streisand. Okay, sorry. Well, uh, <laughs> hmm, not a little bit of a, all of it, but not really. <laughs> um, we, my, you know, my father, we, for some reason, we were going through this thing that we didn't want to be buried underground. <laughs> <laughs> it was a phase. It was a phase, mm -hmm. and then um, 
like I'm a perfectionist, so when I dive into something, I really do. And I, I made this mausoleum. It looks like the Greek Parthenon. It's much smaller version, but it looks like the Parthenon. And does it has and, your name, your last, your name on it, and all of that? Is yeah, that- Roth. Okay. It's very, very um, understated underneath. You have I, I bet. It. Um, anyway, uh, my dad was the one who actually, because uh, that's in Queens, and he said he wanted it to be near Manhattan. He wanted it to be out in the boonies in Long Island or Westchester, or out in New Jersey. So that cemetery was right there, and that was actually the only plot available, and it just happened to be next to her and it was super cool that it was and hers is art deco so she was as a super cool well, it's like, like an architecture and cemetery a, it's a streisand rock you know, wow yeah. now when you have a mausoleum uh, um does the entire family get buried there so you know these are all good questions when we're designing it we have 25 <laughs> slots so wow it's like bunker like bunkers and it's in the like back a, we have like for underground uh-huh. Yeah, I just, it's just, right now, it's just my father, his brother, Robert, and his wife, and that's it. There's three. But, and you have two sons, is that right? Two sons, so we'll see how it goes. Well, Jesus, we'll see how it goes. You have to, and, you and have wives, to choose, I mean, you're hoping that there's going to be some family members to fill up that 25 seats. Yeah, They're but I could do there. a play in there, you know? You could do a lot in there. <laughs> All right. Well, that- My favorite was, wait, uh, just to back up. Remember Dynasty? Remember mm-hmm. Colby on Dynasty? Yes. When he was upset, he used to go out to the cemetery and they had a family, big mausoleum that said Colby on it. And he used to sit there and talk to his, I don't know, I think it was did that, dad. Did that motivate you for your Roth? It definitely inspired me. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go blaster a label on there with a whole bunch of writing about you. Um, Peter, um, you know, before we go, I would like to ask you, what, we we sometimes ask people to give advice to who they would be, you know, ten years b- before, and and what you've learned in the last uh, ten years. What would you have told yourself when you were forty? So this is just I always say whenever I whenever I have an idea of doing something, I really need to go with it and not have someone hold me back because everyone's going to tell you not to do it. Yeah. Like literally, everyone's going to tell you not to do it, and they're not telling you necessarily to hold you back although some people actually will do that Mm. but most of them um you know most people are not entrepreneurs they're not risk takers and a risk taker an entrepreneur does something someone else wouldn't do Mm. uh and a lot of these kind of ideas i just, just have to do it it's kind of like just i think of it like a swimming pool like i hate to get wet in a swimming pool not for a totally different reason so i have my contact lenses to deal with and my hair is going to look like shit, then I can't put my anti-shine on it, right? But if you're in the south of France and you see the beautiful Mediterranean, once you get in the water, it's unbelievable. Like, it's the best day of your life, right? But thinking about getting in it with the consequences of what you have to do after usually holds everyone back. And Mm. and it's kind of the same thing. Like, just jump in the water and you can deal, put a hat on and put your sunglasses on and you'll deal with all that stuff later. And, And sometimes it's hard to do that. That's you really do good that. advice. And you also figure out, you need to figure out what your big losses are if you do it. <clears throat> you know, you make a list. This is what will happen if it doesn't work. And this is what happened if it kind of works or if it really works. And if you could take the hit with the worst scenario, then I say do it. If you can't take the hit with the worst scenario, that's like a big gamble. And you really have to think about it because no one wants to gamble their money or their house, you know, but you could gamble a little bit of it. Well, and also, I mean, but like what you're saying, if you don't take the gamble, you don't take the risk, then you're not serving yourself in the, in the highest way possible. So I, I just absolutely adore that advice. And we're going to leave everyone with thinking, go go do it. Go be who you want to be. Follow take your the guts. Rest. Jump, Follow the gut. Jump in the pool. There you go. Jump in the pool. Jump in the pool. Peter, we can't thank you enough for being on the show today. And until next time, everybody, live in loving kindness. And don't be a dick. We're better together with Anne and Heather. Well, I hope you enjoyed that pounding episode of Better Together with Anne and Heather. They got to they got to keep Park Avenue pretty. <laughs> Hammering away at that Park Avenue. Okay, never mind. This is not obviously going to make the cut, so I'll just have a drink of my Diet Coke, who's not a sponsor. <laughs> what you to go on? What was it on pounding on about it? The pounding, the pounding, the pounding of the hammer and the nail and the saw. Okay, bye.
There. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. And a big thanks to our Better Together team, Ryan Tillotson, Sebastian Alcala, Daniel Ferreira, and of course, Anne and Heather. If you haven't already, please subscribe on whatever device or platform you're listening to this on. And as always, see you next week. We're better together with Anne and Heather.